is another busy week for AEW with a handful of new debuts, so we'll take a look at all the latest news and rumors with AEW, as well as look at Roman Reigns. Let's start things off with AEW's All Out pay-per-view event. It was another highly successful event which Tony Khan even labeled as the most watched pay-per-view in AEW history. It was a loaded card from top to bottom and was non-stop action right from the jump. It featured CM Punk's first real in-ring action in well over 7 years. Punk picked up the win over Darby Allin and they all shook hands after that matchup. All Out also featured a lot of AEW debuts of some familiar faces from WWE. Ruby Soho, formerly known as Ruby Riot, made her AEW debut at All Out, picked up the win and will soon have a date with Britt Baker for the AEW women's title. Some of the most talked about moments happened at the end of the show as well. Kenny Omega brought out former NXT champion Adam Cole. Yes, Adam Cole was just on NXT a few weeks ago, but what made him skip the 90-day non-compete clause was the fact that his WWE contract had officially expired and he was working with NXT on a short-term deal. So all of that basically eliminated the 90-day clause. As soon as he was done with his last day in NXT and the clock struck midnight, he was an unrestricted free agent that could sign anywhere and immediately appear. It was reported for weeks that WWE was actively trying to hold on to Adam Cole. It was reported that Vince McMahon actually liked Adam Cole, met with him, and they went over what the plans would be like for his main roster debut in WWE. Everything seemed to be going well, but then the topic of Twitch and live streaming allegedly led to both sides no longer being on the same page. Adam Cole was able to keep his streaming on Twitch during his time on NXT, but a trip to the WWE main roster basically meant that Adam Cole would be forced to give up the Twitch channel. WWE has a strict third-party ban on the main roster superstars. They can't stream, they can't do anything like that. This was reportedly a huge turnoff for Adam Cole. Him giving up his Twitch channel was not even negotiable. And looking from the outside in, that seems to be where the contract negotiations probably fell apart. Adam Cole probably already had his mindset on leaving, but it is possible that he would have at least considered the thought of staying in WWE if they allowed him to at least keep the Twitch channel up. It's a possibility for sure. Everyone thought that WWE wouldn't let Adam Cole get away. You're talking about a former NXT champion and even 2019's Wrestler of the Year, according to Pro Wrestling Illustrated's list. So you're talking about a top star here. Everyone thought that Adam Cole would make a surprise debut on Raw or SmackDown, but that wasn't the case. It was reported that WWE sent out a message and email to everyone about Adam Cole's departure and how the deal wasn't done. Adam Cole signed with AEW right away, and that's what we all saw at All Out. Huge reaction from the crowd, and he's finally reunited with his old friends and, of course, Britt Baker. But the night wasn't over there. AEW then brought out Brian Danielson, formerly known as Daniel Bryan, in WWE. Brian's AEW theme still has the familiar intro from his WWE theme, but now has a more hip-hop and modern feel to it, which sounded amazing. If you also notice, during Brian's entrance, he seemed like he was getting ready for a yes chant, but sort of hesitated midway through his entrance. Brian was asked about the yes chant during the post-show media session and had this to say in terms of bringing the yes chant to AEW. I don't know, we're going to have to talk about what I can do and what I cannot do. One of the things I do try to respect, because like I said, I appreciate the people I work for before and respecting their intellectual property and that sort of thing. So, making sure that I don't contradict any of that. The fans doing it is great, but I'm not sure I'm going to do it. So Brian is still unsure if he's legally allowed to do the yes chant. It may be WWE property, but he does seem a bit unsure, so there's a chance that he could still bring back the yes chant to AEW. They're just going to need to do a bit more legal research there. Brian also talked about his decision to come to AEW and had this to say. 
But the final decision, honestly, was just like, I started thinking about things. WWE was so gracious with me, as far as the offer that they gave me. They were going to let me go do some other stuff on the outside, but I hate to say this, Vince sometimes, he and I have a great relationship. I love him, I do. Sometimes he's overprotective of me. I want to be able to push my limits. That's one of the things that I love about this, is like the physicality of what we do out there and being able to push my limits and being able to do that here in a safe manner is one of the things that really drew me here. So it seems like that played a role in his decision as well. He felt like Vince McMahon and WWE were a bit too overprotective with him. So he wanted to go to a place that would allow him to go to that extra mile and push those boundaries like he said. Just a big night that featured amazing matches, storytelling, and the debuts of a lot of familiar faces. The next big rumored and possible AEW debut is Bray Wyatt. Bray Wyatt will be freed from his non-compete clause on October 29th, which just happens to be around the same time frame of AEW's next pay-per-view event. Bray Wyatt has been teasing on social media that he's working on a new mask, a new character, something big. We know that for sure because he's been putting that out there. What the public still doesn't know, of course, his next destination. Everyone automatically assumes AEW, but there were a few reports that Impact Wrestling was going to do whatever it takes to land Bray. So when it comes to Bray's landing spot, it's still up in the air. As much as fans would love to see Bray in AEW, fans have pointed out that the AEW roster is becoming beyond stacked right now. Of course, it's all up to Bray and what he's looking for, but if he wants a little more room to breathe, signing with Impact Wrestling could be the move as well, since their roster isn't even close to being as stacked as AEW's. So when it comes to Bray Wyatt, it's almost 50-50 right now on where he'll end up. The good thing is that we'll most likely see him back in the ring in early November, and we'll also be introduced to the new character that he's been working on. So wherever he ends up at, we'll follow him and his storylines over there and break it all down. That's going to be a very exciting debut as well. It's been officially confirmed that Roman Reigns and the Usos will not be joining SmackDown's tour of the UK. Instead, the Bloodline is advertised to appear at Raw that week on September 20th in North Carolina. If this was the Survivor Series season, then it would be normal to see superstars appearing on different shows. WWE does have the wildcard rule, but that seems to come and go. Everyone is still trying to think of a storyline reason why the Bloodline will be coming over to Raw in the middle of September. However, it's still unknown at this moment if they actually will be appearing on the show or if they'll just be working a six-man tag team dark match. Considering that there's no storyline reason for them to be on Raw, it seems more likely that this will be a dark match appearance. But Raw sure does need all the help that they can get. So Roman being a part of Raw, even for one week, would be great help. But what are your thoughts on today's stories? Leave your comments below. Don't forget to subscribe with all notifications on and leave a like if you enjoyed. Thanks for watching, guys.